Yeah. Do you really need to get out of bed? Time to get your day started, and we have just the way to do it. Welcome in to Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, weather, sports, and some laughs along the way. That'll get you up and at them, sleepyhead. Uh, not you, Henry. This is Talk of the Town on 103.7 WTIB. Here's Henry. Okay, welcome in hour two. Talk of the town at five minutes after eight o'clock. It is uh, Friday morning, August the second. Good to have you here. The uh, weather for the weekend looks uh, a little iffy. It's going to be uh, some scattered storms here and there, particularly inland. But uh, Jim Howard on WITN says that there'll be less rain at the beach. So guess where I'm going? <laughs> that makes sense to me. Uh, McGee is here. Good morning, McGee. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to talk sports this hour. Hunter Can and Hunter Cannon the the, uh, the, the coach of the uh, 13-year-old baseball team. You know, two weeks ago today, we had them on over at Vidant Wellness, and they went off and won the Southeast Regional, and now they're going to the World Series. i tell you, the Greenville base, the youth baseball thing in Greenville is off the hook. Isn't Impressive. It? No doubt Another about it. Another team going Every to the year. World Series. So we'll talk to Hunter. They, uh, as, as always, it's very expensive. They're doing some fundraisers, and so Hunter's going to tell. I'm, I'm going to talk about winning the whole thing and then uh, – and then go into the World Series. And poor Hunter is already here. Bless your heart. Hunter's out in the lobby. Uh, the, the Speaker of the House had asked to be on this morning. We originally had him at 8.30, so I moved Hunter back to 8.15. And now the Speaker needs to be on at 8.10, so we've moved Hunter back to 8.30. Again, Hunter, I'm sorry, but uh, we'll get you on here in a few minutes. Um, speaker of the House, Tim Moore, in Greenville yesterday, uh, touring the uh, ECU School of Medicine with a bunch of uh, legislators, but uh, Candy Smith was not one of them. She did not arise. She did not come yesterday, and um, so she um, she continues to be uh, uh, non-committal with regard to whether or not she will vote uh, with the Republicans. And uh, we are told six other Democrats that are are, are teed up to vote to override the veto. Um, you know, Tim Moore has this on the House calendar, and it's been there now for almost a month, but he hasn't called for a vote. So I'm going to ask the Speaker when we get him on here in just a minute, are you going to push the envelope and go ahead and just vote and see where, where Candy, because Candy won't commit one way or the other. She will not say she's going to vote to override, but she doesn't say she won't. And at the end of the day, there's $250 million for the Brody School of Medicine in the budget. There's also money for Bethel and Aiden in the budget. I mean, it's one of the best budgets we've ever had. So uh, Speaker of the House, Tim Moore, who was here in Greenville yesterday, uh, I was over there with him. We toured. The uh, dean of the med school did a great job of, um, of, of explaining to the speaker and the other legislators there uh, why it's important that we get this building built. I mean, we got one of the top med schools in the country. They're getting ready to increase the size, and there's just not room. And that building's antique. I mean, look, there was wood paneling on the walls when I was saw there. that. Yeah, I was like, dude, come on. Uh, we got a medical school and a double wide. We got to we got to take care of that. Mark Gentner is here from WITN. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Henry. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Mark's had a little surgery. If you're watching on video this morning, he's got a little something on his nose. Yeah. But you had to. You're doing okay, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. Uh, pain to go through. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, God bless you. Uh, hey, um, this is a little bit of a shock. Lowe's this morning is announcing that uh, they are uh, they're cutting uh, they're going to cut thousands of jobs from Lowe's. You would think of all the companies in North Carolina that are doing great in the economy that it, Lowe's would be doing fine, right? With all the construction going on and everything. Well, the ones here always seem busy. Huh? The ones here always seem busy. I know, yeah. But apparently, they're going to cut some jobs uh, for maintenance and facility workers and. Uh, and, and, and start outsourcing some of the things that they do in-house. Uh, we'll see. Uh, That's how. the guy that uh, um, is highly thought of CEO who uh, kind of failed in his mission at J.C. Penney to try to revive it and then took over the Lowe's. Oh. And, and he's on a mission to uh, revamp it. He's trying to uh, take on Home Depot. They've got about 300,000 employees yeah. nationwide. Uh, lows, but they're going to cut some of them. All right, uh, nine after, and the speaker has uh, dialed in here. I think Speaker Moore is on his way to Charlotte right now to visit some of the facilities at UNC Charlotte. He was here at ECU yesterday and uh, was uh, visiting the Brody School of Medicine. 
Speaker of the House Tim Moore, live on the phone, uh, probably behind the wheel. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. How are you? Good morning, Henry. Well, I'm, fortunately, I'm not driving, but I am riding. So good oh, to good. Be with you. Oh, you're doing that John Edwards thing? John Edwards. I don't do anything. <laughs> I don't do anything John Edwards does. That I, know of. I, I wish. I, actually, I wish I was like the lawyer he was. I will say that. <laughs> we used to joke when John Edwards would come in to do my show. It, it, there would be two cars that pulled up, and uh, uh, John would be in the back seat of the second car, and you, he would never drive. And then Richard Burr would would pull in here in, in like a a, a nineteen eighty four Buick driving himself with nobody with him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know. We do three cars. Why would we only do two? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was great to see you yesterday. It was nice to have you in Greenville. And uh, let me say, I don't think I've had the opportunity to publicly thank you for your advocacy of, um, of of this new building for the Brody School of Medicine. But there's, there's other things in this budget for Pitt County, not just the um, – the the, uh, the the money for the the new new building at the uh, ECU School of Medicine, uh, and you, you got the tour yesterday. You saw it firsthand. You saw the wood paneling on the walls. You got uh, the the uh, the narrative from the dean of the med school, Mark Stacy. Uh, what was your opinion after you came in and saw the building? Well, you know they do say wood paneling is coming back in style. So <laughs> it's bad and probably like the. Uh, Old orange stoves and ovens. You remember those from the seventies? I you know, bet there's no. I bet you, there's you, no wood you paneling at your alma mater. I bet there's no That's wood right. paneling it, at your alma mater. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It, it would be environmentally responsible with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, you, you make a good point, Henry. The uh, the facilities there are you know, they're just not adequate for for where medical schools are right now, and. You are wanting to attract the best and the brightest. Not only that, but you want to also expand. Because as we talked about yesterday, it, it's not only maintaining what we have, but we have a real shortage of doctors, not at, not just in eastern North Carolina, although that's probably the greatest need, but really throughout the entire state, particularly in the rural areas. And one of the great things about ECU is that it is the medical school where most of your you know, Small town doctors are, are, are coming from where your general practitioners, uh, and this is absolutely critical. So, you know, investing in this, this is it's wonderful for Eastern North Carolina. It's wonderful for Eastern U, but it's it's bigger than that. I mean, this is critical to uh, to our state. So that's why we're traveling around. We're, you know, we're going to UNC Charlotte today to talk about investment there. That that's one of the fastest growing campuses, as you know, in the system. And you know, all of this is held up because the governor has vetoed this budget because he wants Medicaid for all. I, I was talking to somebody the other day. We got AOC in Washington. But we got RAC down in Raleigh. <laughs> and we got AOT coming to Eastern North Carolina in the congressional race, but that's another story. Um, you, you have got the vote to override the veto on the House calendar, but which means that you could call for the vote at any time. But you haven't called right. for it yet because, and you know, I would presume that, you know, when you know that you've got the votes to override the veto, that you'll call for that vote. And um, uh, the, 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 the strategy, of course, for you and Phil Berger has been to say to the governor, let's deal with this on a separate, um, in a separate session. But, but does the governor give up his, uh, his leverage to get anything done with Medicaid if, um, uh, What's the what's the guarantee to the governor that you'll be serious about looking at the Medicaid expansion issue if he goes ahead and signs the budget? Well, of course, if I wasn't serious about the discussion, we would not have filed the bill that's there and allowed that bill to move and be on the calendar. You know, on that same on the same calendar where you see the veto override, you also see the Carolina CARES bill, which is a type of Medicaid expansion, but but really what it deals with, Henry, as opposed to just this blanket expansion, and, and, and give me a minute because I want to make sure your listeners understand the difference between what's being talked about. What the bill that what Carolina Cares does is it's designed to take care of basically the working poor, those who are out working sometimes one, two, maybe even three jobs, but they don't qualify under the exchange to, to get insurance or, they, or they, they fall into this kind of donut hole. Okay, and so there, you know, right now, if somebody goes and tries to buy insurance, it's not uncommon to see insurance premiums of $1,500 a month. 
So if you're somebody who's making $25,000 a year, you do the math at $1,500 a month, you've really got nothing left over for anything else. So why is health insurance so expensive? Now, one of the big reasons, frankly, is what happened with Obamacare. Obamacare caused a lot of this problem. And so what we and we and I've been hoping that Obamacare would be repealed. It's an unfair mandate. It has ruined access to health care and it's been a total disaster. So one of the, the reasons that I've gotten behind this is because got the feds have messed this up. And now we have our citizens here at the state who are paying the price and we need to try to find ways to help them. There are also other approaches, but you need to contrast that with what the governor wants to do. The governor is proposing essentially a Medicaid for all where it doesn't matter if you're what your condition is. For example, I believe if somebody's disabled, uh, they're elderly, they've got minor children that can't work, we need to help them. But the governor's got a plan where his, his proposal is somebody who's in their 20s, able-bodied, able to go get a, get a job, but just doesn't want to, where they would get that free insurance. I don't think we need to do that. If somebody's able to provide for themselves, then by golly, they ought to have to do it. Yeah, it's it's the uh, it's it's the same old argument that we're hearing on the federal level, and you're hearing across the country, which is well, North Carolinians are paying into this Medicaid program as part of uh, the expansion th- through Obamacare. Yet that money's going to other states. We're not getting any of it coming back to North Carolina. Is is that number one accurate? And number two, if that's the case. Um, what do you what do you want to do about that? So the feds are right now the way it works. So the feds have a ninety ten match. For every ten percent the state puts in, the feds match by ninety. Okay. So the total cost of doing the Carolina Cares could run around four billion. But of that four billion dollars, four hundred million would only be the state share. That four hundred million would be paid through a hospital assessment. The hospitals are fine paying the center because right now all those folks that they're covering, they're getting no pay. So at least with that $400 million assessment, they would be then leveraging that to get the 90% from the feds. And that all sounds great, but here's the problem. The federal government is scaling that back. Uh, there, there's talk that it's going to potentially go back to a 65-35 or a 50-40, all right? So then all of a sudden, instead of the assessment, which is $400 million, which doesn't affect the state's budget. If that goes away, then the state's on the hook. So the state can then all of a sudden be on the hook if if it's not done right for a billion dollars. The way the governor wants to do it, the state would be on the hook potentially for up to the $4 billion and growing. And to put that in perspective, our current state budget is $24 billion. So if you take the uh, the governor's model, the state's potential exposure is now $28 billion. And that's, I mean, if that happens, Katie bar the doors, you know, we had a great surplus. You probably covered it already, nine hundred million dollars. But you know, it would gobble through that, and there'd have to be either you know yeah. cuts or tax increases. So that's that's what we're facing. By the way, I had not mentioned the surplus, but I, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I just made a note to ask you about that. Nine hundred million dollars surplus this year in the budget, um, yeah. Mr. Speaker. I just got to congratulate you. You know what's going on. I know the economy's gotten better, but. You know, when the Republicans took over in Raleigh, we were furloughing state employees. School teachers were not getting a raise, and everybody was complaining about being at the bottom of the national national average. And you know what you guys have done in the last ten years in Raleigh is is just simply amazing. I mean that that may be a political statement, but it's also a fact that you know we are now having. Uh, you, you had almost a billion dollar surplus this year. Which is uh, is it has to be, in large part, to the policies, the tax cuts, and the things that have gone on since you've been in office up there. I'll tell you, Henry. A couple things in response. I I I, I, I laughed a little bit this morning. I occasionally read the comments on my Facebook page, and I noticed one person there commented about how great the economy is doing because Roy Cooper's governor. I didn't bother to respond. But <laughs> I guess I should point out. I guess I should point out that every budget that we've passed since he's been governor, he's vetoed, and we've had to override his veto. So, you know, him trying to claim credit for anything good from the budget is like the rooster trying to claim credit for the sun rising. It just does not work out. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, he, he vetoed those budgets. Uh, but, but, and let's look before that, the budget that we've passed, that Republicans took over, have been 
key and instrumental in this state's economic growth. We've cut taxes. We've cut regulations. We've, we've done things. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's government, but it ain't rocket science. We can look <laughs> and we can see what other states have done and say, you know, these states are really successful. We can see how things are going so strong in Texas. What are they doing right? We, we've looked at these things and we took the majority. And we've looked at those, and, we, and we've seen, we, 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 you know, we bet, we said, if we lower these taxes, we cut these regulations, if we make these changes in how we're spending money, if we do these things, we believe the economy will, will surge, we believe we will have surplus. If, if you'll remember last year, when we, when we passed our budget over the last override that we override, excuse me, that we overrode, the governor came out predicting it was going to be a mass deficit. I think he was saying they were gonna, <laughs> that we were going to come up. 400 million upside down, all of that. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, I think his numbers would now be off about 1.3, 1.4 billion. So <laughs> our, we, we were projecting, you know, we were we were being conservative, right? We, we said, well, we think we know if we do this, we'll be able to meet our obligations, and we think we may even have a surplus. And, and we're right on that because we're trying to, as much as you can, run government like a business. I mean, and you can't. I mean, we're not a for-profit entity, so you can't run it truly as a business. But you can use good, sound business principles. You know, use funds for what they're designated for. Only tax what you need. Spend appropriately. Don't waste money. You do these things, and it pays off. And that's what we're seeing. And that's why North Carolina is so strong right now. Yeah. Uh, again, congratulations. Um, and I, I give you and uh, the other leadership in the last 10 years, Tom Tillis before you, and I know you worked very closely with Speaker Tillis before he went on to the U.S. Senate and Phil Berger in the Senate. Uh, I don't always agree with everything that the senator does, but uh, you can't argue with the economic success of the state right now. All right. Uh, you are traveling around. You are going to Charlotte today. You were in Greenville yesterday. Monday, you'll be in Elizabeth City. That's something we need to point out. We have listeners up in Elizabeth City as well, Mr. Speaker, and you guys are going to put in $40 million into Elizabeth City State. And I ask you, when did Elizabeth City, North Carolina, get a $40 million cash injection? You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot going, there's a lot going on here in eastern North Carolina. Absolutely. This, is, this budget invests hugely in, in eastern North Carolina and in rural North Carolina, you know, because the urban areas, they're doing just fine. They're moving along. I mean, they think things are strong there. And we're investing, of course, in our universities and other uh, public infrastructure there as well. But we, we've looked at, you know, where are the hot spots in North Carolina? Where are the areas where we know that that state investment could really make a critical difference? And so when we've spent money, whether it's on university, whether it's on capital projects, you name whatever it is, we have looked at areas where we know it'll make a difference. And Elizabeth City State, I mean, they've had some, they've had some rough years. And so we put 40, I think, 40 some odd million dollars into, uh, into, into Elizabeth City State. That is going to be a game changer, a game changer for that region. But you know what? The only way it happens, Henry, is if we get this veto ever written. Uh, and I'm glad to talk more about where we stand on the budget as far as the negotiations, if you want to go there. Yeah, that's what that's actually the, was going to be my next question because, uh, of course, uh, uh, Candy Smith, we are told that Candy Smith, if you can get Candy to move and, and, and commit, she, she at this moment is noncommittal. I, I was texting with her last night, and her response last night was simply that she had not made a decision yet. Now, when in the world is she going to make a decision? And what's she waiting for? But she said, uh, I asked her for some sort of a statement. She said, well, tell people that I vote in this order. My number one, my conscience. Number two, my constituents. And number three, my caucus. So she's saying this is not political, although we're hearing that the governor's threatening to run someone against her. But, uh, you, you know, I mean, the, 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 and, and I like candy, but I mean, the message is clear here, isn't it, Mr. Speaker? Not only the $215 million going into the Brody School of Medicine, I believe there's money in her district for the Bethel Water System. There's also money for that Ag uh, Center in, uh, in Aden. There's a lot of money coming to Pitt County, and uh, Candy continues to be um, on the fence. Well, I, I've, had, I've had many conversations with Representative Smith, and, I, and, and I, I don't ever share the nature of those conversations. I always maintain those confidentially, but I will just say I've had many conversations. I think a lot of her, and of course, I'm hoping she'll be able to be there with us on this veto override, um, and, and as well as a number of other Democratic members. But I, but I, uh, 
you touch on something, and that is that Democratic members are in a bit of a, of a pickle because I, I do, I've been told by a number of them that the governor has really leaned on them pretty heavily. And uh, I was even told that some of them were introduced to their prospective primary opponents if they voted with us on an override. And what I tell my folks, and you mentioned that quote earlier, what I've told my, my members uh, is they should always vote in, in that order of what's, will you vote your conscience? vote your district, and then vote with your caucus. So I, I know I know where, where how I would vote in, if capital projects like this were coming to my region of the state that were game changers. But, yeah, that's up to each individual member. Uh, every member of the House, all 120 of us are all elected the same way. We're all – none are any more important than the other. We all got there the same way. And, uh, and, and I always give the same amount of respect to every member that uh, – to every single member. So – but where we are on, as far as the, the, the budget, you know, the governor has said, and, and where we've, and Phil Berger and I have as well, have agreed to debate the governor on this issue of the budget and the Medicaid and Medicaid and whatever else. We, I think the Charlotte Observer ran an editorial uh, yesterday about it. Uh, I, would wel- I would welcome the opportunity to have a public debate and discussion on, on this thing. To just get it out there, flesh all this out, and, and lay it out there. And, and what, what Senator Berger and I have made clear to the governor is drop this request, you know, this demand that Medicaid for all be a part of the state budget. Just get rid of that as a, as a demand for the budget. Let's deal with the budget. $24 billion there to, to take care of all sorts of critical needs from pay raises for state employees and teachers to funding these key priorities. And then let's have that conversation because here's the thing, Henry. It simply, even if you adopt the philosophy that, that – that some of the more liberals have about Medicaid expansion, that we need to cover everybody or, or whatever. Even if you did that, even under their theory, you don't solve all the health care problems, all right? If you're up in Hyde County and you're having a heart attack, I can promise you you're not worried about whether Medicaid is going to pay for your treatment. You're worried about, am I going to be able to get to a hospital to be treated in time? Well, there are, there are areas all around the state where there, there's is issues of, of you know, access to emergency facilities, enough doctors there to help treat people uh, for just you know, normal, uh, normal health care so that you do things and don't get into a situation. And, but we, and we need a broader discussion. There's also, for example, we talked about how extensive uh, health insurance is. Well, we need to have the conversation about what can we do, whether it's associated health plans or other things, to make uh, insurance more affordable folks. So there's things we can do to give other options, create more uh, competition of the marketplace. So there needs to be a full, a fuller discussion of the issue of improving health care in North Carolina, not just, you know, throwing more money in and, and, and into something that without anything else. And, and unfortunately, that's that seems to be where the governor is right now. And, and uh, I, I can't explain why, but I'll tell you this. I'll bet you if the three of us had a public debate on this, put us all on the stage, Tell you, tell you you can't even have any notes if you want to. I don't care. And have a discussion about it. I'm prepared to make the arguments that I've made on your radio show to anybody because I think they make sense. I can back them up with numbers. I can back them up with policy. And I think they really take care of North Carolina. Well, if you can talk the governor into doing the debate, we'll carry it live on 200,000-watt radio stations in eastern North Carolina and cover, and cover you from Virginia to Wilmington. How about that? And, and tell the governor well, that, I, and he can, he can use that as a campaign um, opportunity. <laughs> well, look, you're, hey, you're, look you're, hey, you're the political voice of eastern North Carolina. you got more sway with him than I do. <laughs> no, and I don't have any sway with him. No, I've, I've called him Governor Wimpy too many times. In fact, I'm kind of proud of him for, for actually being uh, threatening the uh, legislators with, uh, you know, introducing them to their uh, primary opponents. I, that's, the, that's the boldest thing I've ever heard he ever did because he's the wimpiest governor we've ever had. <laughs> Let's get off that. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, Mr. Speaker. Why not just go ahead? You've got the vote for the override on the veto on the calendar. Why not go ahead? And just call for the vote and see where Candy Smith and others are. Is it too risky? Because once you, if, if you don't win that vote, then you're you're politically harmed and trying to make a deal. What's the strategy on that? I, I have I have told uh, everyone, including the Democrats who are who have uh, said they will vote with us, that I will not call for the vote until I know the votes are there. And and that's and and we are 
extremely close. Uh, I mean, we were right there. Everybody keeps asking, what's the number? How many do you need? I won't give the number, uh, but I will say we are we are right at it. And, uh, and I believe we're going to get there. And it may take uh, – I think that – I think that folks need to realize that we're that we're serious about this. That we're not uh, that this isn't some sort of bluff. That if we're going to have a budget, this is how it's going to be. The yeah. only other way that we that this doesn't happen Henry, is if the governor will will simply agree to to remove the Medicaid requirement, the Medicaid expansion requirement from the from as a prerequisite, as a demand to do the budget. The second he does that. That will that will remove the log jam. We'll be able to get a discussion going, and I think we could come up with a a consensus budget at that time. Well, you know, he's risking uh, his political future on this too. It seems to me, but uh, I'm sure he has his handlers telling him what to say and what not to say. But if you are really that close on getting the the budget uh, veto override done, um, you know, he may start to change his attitude soon. Mr. Speaker, I know you got an 830 meeting. I'm going to let you go. Um, Thank you for coming to Greenville yesterday, and and thank you for coming back to Elizabeth City this coming week, and enjoy your visit today at UNC Charlotte. That's a great place. Well, it's, look, I I, I enjoy it a lot. I never turn a chance to, uh, or turn down a chance to come down and eat some good barbecue down east, so we we, we managed to do that as well, and it it was a great visit, but I'm going to tell you something. Eastern North Carolina is really fortunate to have East Carolina University and to have the, the Brody School of Medicine right there. And and the, it's going to be critical, absolutely critical, to making sure that Eastern North Carolina is, is absolutely as strong as it can be. So, Henry, I'll come down anytime. Looking forward to Elizabeth City. I'll tell you, uh, uh, listeners, we post the schedule. Anyone want to come out there for any of the events we have, we, we invite them to be there and uh, glad to have discussions because I'm really proud of this budget and glad to talk to anybody about it, about how great it is and why it is critical that we make this law. I heard there was a Parker's barbecue sighting yesterday with you and your entourage yesterday. And uh, there's no Parker's barbecue in Elizabeth City, but if you want to, uh, on the way, if you want to stop at my mama's house, she'll fix you a ham sandwich. All right. A ham, all right we, we might just do that then. We'll, we'll come. <laughs> I've, I've got the. We, we, I've got some guys that work on my staff, and they they, they eat a lot. So they better be careful. To make sure well, they want to go to Sam's or Costco and stock up before we get there. But no, it's a it, it was it was a, it really is it was it was really good. It was a good visit yesterday, Henry, because we had a chance to talk. We had local mayors there. We had a lot of folks there yeah. who really appreciate you know what's been. Done. And by the way, you had also, you had so Democrat you had Democrat uh, legislators there. I, I saw Shelley Willingham from Rocky Mountain. Were there any, I, I, some of the legislators I didn't know? Were there other were there other Democrats there other than uh, Shelley? No, Rep- Representative Willingham was the only Democrat there. Uh, uh, Representative Farmer Butterfield was with us in Wilson before yeah, we got there. Right. Uh, we went and toured a new animal. They're going to build a new animal control facility, and so she came there for. Uh, when we were meeting with those folks and touring the facility, I think I, I think at the end of the day, I don't know, we may have had some folks adopt a couple of dogs or something. They were a couple of them were looking at them pretty close, so I don't That's know. Awesome. But it was it, it was a great day. But we did have those two members. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, let us know how we can help you. We appreciate you being on. We'll, we'll do. Thanks, Henry. Have a good one. All right, eight thirty three, Speaker of the House Tim Moore. Long interview there, but uh, some really good stuff and important stuff. We got. We need to get this. Budget, you know, I, I, I'm almost afraid to ask him the question, what happens if we don't get the budget overridden, the, the V2 overridden, and and it just continues to be a stalemate between the legislature and the governor? Uh, do we really just continue on last year's budget, which doesn't include all these, ra- you know, you got a $900 billion surplus, I mean, $900 million Man. surplus. And, um, you know, you got school teachers that need a raise. You got state employees. You got all this money for uh, Pitt County. It would be uh, shameful. 834, let's get a break in. Uh, we're going to talk about the 13 year old Greenville team that's going to the World Series. Stay with us. Be right back. It's summertime. It's summertime. Here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, huge savings on all 2019 Ram trucks and all new Jeep Wranglers. Save up to 25% off MSRP on select new 2019 Ram 1500s. Motor Trends Truck of the Year. Or get 0% for 72 months on 2019 Ram 1500 Classic and Tradesman models during the summer clearance event. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville.
This is a radiated tortoise. Because of the support from AZA, I'm able to put these endangered tortoises back into the wild. When I was younger, watching scuba divers conserve these magnificent creatures, I wanted to be a part of that. I work in Hawaii with critically endangered forest birds. Birds are so interesting to me because they're living dinosaurs. I love working with them. I know I always want to work with kids, and I fell in love with the animals and conservation side. It's exactly where I'm supposed to be. Won't you join us? When you're not feeling well, Vident Health can connect you to the care you need anytime, anywhere, from any device. Connect to a new way to get well. Connect to Vident Now. With Vident Now Virtual Care, you can visit a board-certified doctor online 24-7. It's private, secure, and affordable. See a doctor now at VidentNow.com. This is a nursery, a home, a soft place to land. This is a superhighway, a Sunday morning. This is quality time and a family tradition. Wetlands keep flood waters at bay, improve water quality, and serve as rest stops for the continental journey migrating birds make each year. This is where you play. So this is where we work. At Children's Cancer Research Fund, we believe a world without childhood cancer is possible, but it takes all of us. And whether it's developing a groundbreaking treatment or helping a girl realize her dream, everyone has a role in a child's cancer journey. People ask me how I keep a smile on my face. It's easy when you have so many great people that take care of you and support you. To find out how you can be a part of a child's cancer journey and a part of the cure, visit childrenscancer.org, a public service message from Children's Cancer Research Fund. The information you want when you need it. This is your Talk of the Town News Update. Good morning. Police are on the hunt for a man who reportedly robbed someone with a knife in one eastern Carolina city. Kinston police say it happened on Vernon Avenue near Mitchell Street at the King's Tobacco and Food Mart at around 3.15 this morning. The victim reported being held at knife point and, sus and the suspect taking $40. Nobody was hurt, but police say the suspect is a black male in his 30s, about 5 feet 9 inches with a fade haircut. If you have any information, call Kinston police at 252 939 32 Deputies in the East are also looking to help identify someone wanted for questioning a break-in at a local business. Onzo County deputies responded to the Brown Derby Bar on Wilmington Highway in Jacksonville on Wednesday for a report that a suspect pried open a door to the business and stole cash. Surveillance video shows a man with his face covered and wearing gloves prying open the register. If you have any information, call the Onzo County Sheriff's Office. East Carolina University says it's expecting to welcome its largest freshman class as it continues to address budget concerns. The university released a UNC system financial operations assessment during a board of trustees meeting Thursday. 34 page report was done when former ECU Chancellor Cecil Staten stepped down in May. It examines the university's budgeting for the ECU Physicians Medical Group, University Athletic Program, and the Southside renovation of Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. The assessment found ECU doesn't have consistent rules for spending in those areas and there are ways to change methods to improve fiscal responsibility. The report comes nearly two months after ECU Interim Chancellor Dan Gerlich announced the university would be reducing a portion of its budget, which includes a hiring freeze. The university including, included those as steps taken to address budgeting concerns in its response to the financial assessment. The administration is also recommending other changes, such as not authorizing any new debt. Gerlich says the university's budget is balanced through 2020. He says now the university must wait to see if the millions of dollars put towards athletics in recent years will help generate revenue. And finally, the regional USA Gymnastics Championship will be hosted in Greenville for the first time next year and will bring in millions of dollars as a result. Competition will see level 9 and 10 gymnasts, those at the highest levels, compete for a, sport, a spot in the national championships. The Greenville Pitt County Sports Commission says the championship will bring in more than just talent. Greenville Sports Commission Sports Development Director Paul Sheehan says they're expecting this to generate $2.1 million in estimated economic impact. 
championship will be held April 17th through the 19th of next year and bring in gymnasts from Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and more. 500 gymnasts are expected at the event and at least six from our local Roses Gymnastics. That's your WITN News Update. Back to you, Henry. Okay, let's check our weather. We got isolated showers and thunderstorms uh, coming in the afternoons for the next three days, about a 40% to 60% chance of rain. How about the boating forecast? Let's check and see what's happening with our boating forecast brought to you by Park Boat Company and Manteo Marine. Of course, uh, it looks like it's going to be flat uh, all weekend. The problem is not going to be the water you are got your boat on. It's going to be the water coming out of the sky. The, uh, the, the, the rivers and sounds today look very good, but uh, increased to a little bit of a light chop in the afternoon. Offshore, going to be only about two feet because the winds are out of the east. And then Saturday, a wind shift to southeast, five to ten. So it's still going to be about two to three feet offshore and uh, light chop in the rivers and sounds of eastern North Carolina. And on Sunday, north winds about ten and uh, becoming west in the afternoon, two to four feet uh, offshore and light chop in the rivers and sounds. Good time, to, good weekend to go boating. Uh, to be honest with you, if you can, um, if, if you can dodge some thunderstorms out there, and as uh, we heard uh, Jim Howard WITN say this morning, there will probably be more chance of thunderstorms inland than there will be down on the coast this weekend. So if you've got a boat, get out there and enjoy it. If you don't have one, go down to Park Boat Company in Washington to get you one. Park Boat Company, Manio Marine, your source on the, on the, the in eastern North Carolina for on-the-water fun. And they've got a great selection of new and used boats, personal watercraft in stock at Park Boat Company, Washington, Manio Marine. All right, we got 13-year-olds going to the uh, World Series, and we got their head coach in here, Hunter Cannon. We're going to talk to Hunter right after this. Price drop is back at Greenville Toyota. Get our biggest savings of the year on Corollas, just fourteen four fifty, or Rav fours twenty thousand nine ninety five at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. connect you to the care you need anytime anywhere from any device connect to a new way to get well connect to Vident now with Vident now virtual care you can visit a board certified doctor online 24 7 it's private secure and affordable see a doctor now at VidentNow.com. Here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, huge savings on all 2019 Ram trucks and all new Jeep Wranglers. It's the summer of Jeep. Get 0% for 60 months or payments as low as $249 a month on a new Jeep Cherokee. Or lease a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $279 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. That's the end. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Freshwater wetlands cover only 1% of the Earth's surface, but provide habitat for 12% of all animals. Why are wetlands such good homes? The plants, water, and soils of wetlands provide food and homes for mammals, birds, fish, and more. Sadly, wetlands are at risk, and that puts wildlife at risk too. To find out more about wetlands and how you can help, visit ducks.org.
it's back and the savings are bigger than ever. It's the big price drop at Greenville Toyota. Get our lowest price of the year on Camrys. Just $18,995. $18,995 at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Make sure you take Talk of the Town with you anywhere you go. Online at WTIBFM.com. Now, back to the show. Here's Henry Hinton. 845. Uh, two weeks ago today, we had the uh, 13-year-old Babe Ruth Prep League uh, team that was going to the Southeast Regionals on our program. We were over at Vita Wellness, and uh, you know what they did? They went and won the Southeast Regional, and so now they're headed to the World Series which is going to be in Massachusetts this coming week. Hunter Cannon is the, uh, the the head coach of the team, and Hunter's back here with us this morning. We were not on location, so I couldn't bring in all the players this morning, but I'll make you a, I'll make you a promise. When you guys win the World Series, we'll do a big celebration somewhere in the community. That, that sounds good. How you doing? I, I'm good. How about you? You guys are going to the World Series, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. How's that feel? <sighs> kind of surreal, uh, to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, when, when we got into that last game um, – you know, it it was only it was only one to nothing, and the guy we had going, you know, who were you playing? Uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, actually the host team. Yeah. Um, but uh, the guy we had pitching uh, threw seven complete innings and didn't break sixty pitches. So the game went by really quick, and I kind of look at you know my assistant Cody Cyrus, and I go, "We are three outs away from the World Series," and we just kind of <laughs> looked at one another and didn't know what was going on because everything happened. See, I would so have been fast. afraid to say that at that point. That would have, that would have freaked out the chance. <laughs> so I'm sure the kids were uh, were crazy elated. That was really cool. I'm sure. Yeah, they were they were pretty yeah. excited as yeah. as well. I was too. I could yeah. actually breathe for once. All right. So next week is the World Series for 13 year olds. Mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to go, and it's uh, where in Massachusetts? It's in Westfield. It's right outside of uh, Hartford, Connecticut. It's about a 20-minute drive from Hartford. So you almost be in Connecticut. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, good. And uh, how many teams across the country? Uh, there's 10, um, and there's actually one team from Canada. Um, there's a oh. team from Hawaii, Michigan, North Dakota. No kidding. Um, it's a true World Series. It, it really is, yeah. <laughs> um, now, this is the first time uh, – that I've seen an international team go. Yeah. I'm sure there there may have been one in past years, but it's the first time I've seen it. So that yeah. that'll be a pretty different experience for myself as well as the rest of the kids. So the Greenville Prep League, uh, 13 year olds going to the World Series. I mean, this is becoming commonplace here in Greenville to have these uh, youth league teams go into the World Series, but it really speaks to the culture here. It's unreal, isn't it? I mean, I don't. I've never seen a town that's been able to produce as many great youth league baseball players as Greenville does. Yeah, Green, Greenville means baseball. Um, yeah. And that that's exactly what, you know, we're headed up there to prove. Yeah. Uh, all right, when's the first game? Uh, our first game is going to be on August the 8th. Um, I'm not sure of the time right off, right off the top is, of my uh, head. That is a week from yesterday, right? Thursday? Is that right, McGee? When, right. Yes. On the 8th, yeah. Uh, okay, and uh, will there be any TV coverage or uh, online? Uh, uh, they're, they're streaming it. Um, I can't remember the name of the website. Well, make of make course, sure you let us know. Yes, so we yes can, sir, I sure will. So we can put it on uh, social media so everybody in town can watch the game. We yeah, hope you'll be able to hope you see it. Now, I know uh, you know it costs a lot of money to move uh, that many kids and families to uh, Massachusetts for probably a week, hopefully. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so, so you're doing some fundraising uh, this weekend. Tell us uh, where people can come to help, and um, and if they want to just write a check, they can do that too. Yeah. So, so, uh, so basically, this morning, um, we've actually uh, got a fundraiser going on at uh, Bee's Barbecue. Um, the the boys will be out there. They're out there from ten, and basically until they run out of barbecue, they're just taking donations. Um, tomorrow, um, they're they're doing another event at Tiebreakers, um, another uh, percentage day. Um, we'll get 10% of their proceeds. Um, it'll last all day. And we're also raffling off um, like free car wash tickets, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, you know, we, we've been hitting, um, you know, some local businesses around here. And um, everybody, everybody's been very generous with donations and everything. And it, it's, it's really meant a lot to me and the kids, you know, to see how, how much the uh, community gets behind us and everything. The support's been phenomenal. Uh, if people want to, uh, to 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 donate, how do they do that? What's the best place to do that? So, go? so we've got a GoFundMe page on our Facebook. It's um 2019 13U uh, Greenville Babe Ruth All Stars. Um, that that's where uh, everybody can do it online. I think that's the easiest. Um, but um, if you know if you want to do it in person, you want to write a check. Um, checks can be made payable to uh, Pitt County Babe Ruth. All right, so we got the 13-year-old uh, Babe Ruth team going to the World Series this uh, week. Uh, 
Best of luck to you and uh, bring bring it home, will you? That's, let's win one. Hey, that that's the plan. That'll be good. Good yep, to see you, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hunter Thanks Cannon, the head coach of the thirteen uh, year old Babe Ruth team, going to Massachusetts for the World Series. All right, we'll take a break. Be right back. The big price drop is back at Greenville Toyota. Get our biggest savings of the year on Corollas, just fourteen four fifty, or Rav fours twenty thousand nine ninety five at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. When you're not feeling well, Vident Health can connect you to the care you need anytime, anywhere, from any device. Connect to a new way to get well. Connect to Vident Now. With Vident Now Virtual Care, you can visit a board-certified doctor online 24-7. It's private, secure, and affordable. See a doctor now at VidentNow.com. here. Your gift of an animal from Heifer International can help a family start a small business, creating food and income for education, medicine, and more, all while caring for the earth, around the world, and right here at home. Heifer International. Learn more at heifer.org. It's summertime! It's summertime! Here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, huge savings on all 2019 Ram trucks, and all new Jeep Wranglers. Save up to 25% off MSRP on select new 2019 Ram 1500s. Motor Trends Truck of the Year. Or get 0% for 72 months on 2019 Ram 1500 Classic and Tradesman models during the summer clearance event. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. That's the end. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Big price drop is back at Greenville Toyota. Get our biggest savings of the year on Corollas, just fourteen four fifty, or Rav fours twenty thousand nine ninety five at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. It's a nine o'clock world. Work starts at nine. Don't worry, you're not late yet. Yeah. Back to Henry Hinton and Talk of the Town on one zero three seven WTIB. Talk of the Town brought to you in part this morning by the Tire Realty Group and Property Management Team. If uh, I'm not sure you realize that Tire Realty gives everyone a one-day listing contract so you can fire them at any time. No other agent we know of will do something like this. So hold on. Wait a minute. If you're thinking of selling your home, if you know someone thinking of selling their home, you owe it to yourself to talk with the Tire Realty Group. Pump your brakes before you put another sign in your yard. Call the Tire Realty Group because that would put a lot of extra dollars, thousands maybe, in your pocket. I'm going to give you the telephone number in just a minute. Remember, the Tire Realty Group guarantee they sit down with you, agree on a price and a deadline. If the deadline passes, the home's not sold. They sell your home for free. And Tire Property Management also looking for some great rental properties. Call Tire Realty today. The only agents I would uh, call if I was going to sell my home, 252 758 Home, 758-H-O-M-E, or online at GuaranteedSellNC.com. All right, McGee is here. It's McGee's last hurrah before his week-long <laughs> golf trip. 
So if we have time, I've got the uh, the golf joke uh, for okay. the laugh track again. But here's McGee on sports. We'll stick with the local baseball theme. D.H. Conley, rising sophomore pitcher Matthew Mateus, will join 19 other players from across the country in representing the U.S. at the under-15 Pan American Championships in Mexico September 13th through the 22nd. Mateus is the third Conley player to be selected to a national team, but the first to be selected while still in high school. We see you head baseball coach Cliff Godwin <laughs> announcing on Thursday that he's hired Jason Dietrich to be his next pitching coach. Dietrich was the collegiate baseball's 2016 pitching coach of the year and spent the last three seasons uh, at Oregon in the Hall of Fame game from Thursday night. It was the Broncos of the Falcons 14-10. And Henry, in that game, Kurt Binkert actually played and looked pretty good for the Falcons. You know, of course, oh, he played really? at ECU and wow. played at Virginia. So uh, Binkert that? could be, making, could be uh, earning a spot there with Atlanta. All right, awesome. That's mm-hmm. good. All right, McGee is going to be gone next week, so Patrick Johnson will be – sitting in and means that means we're going to have green county shout outs but <laughs> mcgee in honor of you i came up with a golf uh, laugh track this morning uh lewis grizzard used to tell this joke this old golf joke the great lewis grizzard who was a columnist for a newspaper in atlanta and a real funny guy so here's the laugh track in honor of you mcgee believe it or not i used to play golf with my ex-wife i was playing my ex-wife and i sliced the ball over into the woods who are looking for the ball and I find it, but I have no shot to the green. And my ex-wife, she said, listen, no problem. So I'll tell you what, there's a barn here in front of your shot. I will open the doors of the barn. You hit the ball through the barn, straight toward the green. That's a great idea. She opened it up. I teed the ball up. I knocked it right through the barn. It was almost out of there for a great shot. But just as it was going out, it caught a beam in the barn, bounced off, hit her in the head, and killed her. Dead as a door right there. <laughs> A year later, I'm playing golf in the same hole I, with a friend of mine. I'm slicing the ball over into the right rough. I go over looking for the ball again. I find it. And I said, gee, I got a shot. My friend said, no problem. He said, I'll open the doors to the barn here. You knock the ball through the barn to the green. I said, I can't do that. Nope. There ain't no way I can do that. He said, why not? I said, last time I tried that, I made a seven on this hole. <laughs> uh, the late funny. Louis Grizzard. Just for you, McGee. I'll make a few seconds. Enjoy your golf Thank you. trip. Thank you. We'll I see you in a week. Patrick will be here. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday on Talk of the Town. you to the care you need anytime anywhere from any device connect to a new way to get well connect to Vident now with Vident now virtual care you can visit a board certified doctor online 24 7 it's private secure and affordable see a doctor now at VidentNow.com. By the time I found out that she was up for adoption, she was dead set on, no, I need to just be realistic about my life and what my future holds. That's when she came to me and she said, would you be interested in us adopting you? I didn't think that I would have a family again. I didn't think that I would go to college. I didn't think that I would have love. And with that, I just feel like my world is just so much brighter. You listen when your body says, I'm tired, or I'm hungry. What if your body said something else might be wrong? Gynecologic cancers, cervical, ovarian, and uterine cancers have symptoms, so pay attention. If your body says something may be wrong, please listen. If it goes on for two weeks, see a doctor. It may be nothing, but find out, learn the symptoms, get the inside knowledge about gynecologic cancers. Here at 
East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Huge savings on all 2019 Ram trucks and all new Jeep Wranglers. It's the summer of Jeep. Get 0% for 60 months or payments as low as $249 a month on a new Jeep Cherokee. Or lease a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $279 a month. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville.